Routine Sports wishes you and your team a championship season. Mikhail Gorbachev is set to resign today, and the president of Russia says he's taking control of the nuclear button. Meantime, in Rome, 15,000 people hear Pope John Paul celebrate Midnight Mass. This is NBC News at Sunrise with Ann Curry. Good Merry Christmas, everybody, and good morning. This morning, Mikhail Gorbachev said there's no turning back. He's set to announce his resignation in a televised farewell today at noon Eastern time. And as soon as he resigns, Boris Yeltsin says he's taking control of the nuclear button. Bob Abernathy has more on the story. At the Kremlin, Gorbachev's staff has packed up and moved out. His mail from all over the world has been collected. And as he has so often before, Gorbachev goes on television tonight, this time to announce and probably to sign his resignation. The old Supreme Soviet, the former Union's top legislature, is expected to vote itself out of existence, perhaps tomorrow, as the new Commonwealth of 11 independent republics succeeds the old Union. More than anyone else, Boris Yeltsin, president of the Russian Republic, will take over Gorbachev's power, including the codes and signals to order use of nuclear weapons. In retirement, Gorbachev will keep 20 bodyguards, two cars, a country dacha and a Moscow apartment, and 4,000 rubles a month, a generous salary in Russia, but the equivalent of about 40 U.S. dollars. Gorbachev says he'll support the new Commonwealth, even though he doubts it's strong enough to work. He'll stay connected to public life as president of a research foundation that bears his name. Bob Abernethy, NBC News, Moscow. President Bush is preparing a tribute to Gorbachev after the Soviet president resigns. In a statement, he's expected to praise Gorbachev's leadership in reforming his nation and to offer U.S. recognition of most of the nearly independent Soviet states. Meantime, the fighting continues in Soviet Georgia. Rebel forces are shelling Georgia's parliament building for a third straight day. The Republic's embattled president, who has taken refuge in the building's basement, is calling on the West to support his struggle against what he calls terrorists. In other news, pilgrims came to the little town of Bethlehem today to pray for peace at the site where Christians believe Christ was born nearly 2,000 years ago. Stan Bernard reports from the Holy Land. Bethlehem is the center of the Christian world on Christmas Day, but Jesus' birthplace was chilly, overcast, and rainy, and that was blamed for reducing the number of pilgrims today. The fear of rocks and tear gas raining down, the clashes of the Intifada kept pilgrims away in the previous four years. And last year, the Gulf crisis kept tourists out of the entire region. This Christmas season is easily the best for tourism in the four years of the Palestinian struggle against the Israeli occupation. We'd like to wish the world a 1992 be a year we get peace, especially right here. But this morning, most Bethlehem shops were closed, possibly because of the strike called by radical groups who have rejected the Mideast peace talks. <laughs> But it is attending Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve that brings pilgrims from around the world together with Arab Christians in Bethlehem's Church of St. Catherine. The Roman Catholic Patriarch, Michel Sabah, in the multilingual Mass called for peace between Palestinians and Israelis, saying neither of us has the right to attack the other in the name of God. However, the euphoria that swept this region after the Madrid talks has dissipated, especially among the moderate Arabs. Stan Bernard, NBC News, The Holy Land. In Vatican City, some 15,000 people jammed St. Peter's Basilica as Pope John Paul celebrated Midnight Mass. A 75-foot Christmas tree from Austria and a nativity scene with life-size figures decorated the vast St. Peter's Square. Meantime, here at home, last-minute Christmas shoppers gave retailers a much-needed Christmas sales boost. But retailers say that in sp spite of the big finish, this Christmas shopping season will be an overall disappointment. And in New York City, the story of a stolen religious icon has taken a bizarre twist. John Miller reports that a reputed mob boss has put out the word that the thieves had better return it or else. 
The thieves who stole the religious icon from a Greek Orthodox church now have a lot of people on their trail. Law enforcement sources close to the case say that Greek gangsters in Astoria, Queens, have put the word out on the street that the thieves are to be tracked down and dealt with if the icon and the jewels aren't returned now. The Greek crime group is aligned with the Lucchese and Gambino crime families in gambling rackets. John Gotti, the alleged boss of the Gambino crime family, has been in jail for more than a year awaiting trial. But sources in and out of law enforcement have heard that John Gotti himself has put the word out that anyone who hears anything about the icon is supposed to pass the information along to his friends. Right now, Gotti's main men on the street are said to be his brother, Peter Gotti, and Jack D'Amico, Gotti's close his pal. Both men are said to be aware that the church holdup on the eve of Christmas bothered the boss and have feelers out to get the goods back unharmed, which is probably better shape than the four thieves would be in if the mob finds them before the cops. John Miller, NBC News, New York. When we return, we'll check the day in business and the Christmas weather. The road your business travels is changing at breakneck speed, but you can take advantage of change to be more competitive with computing and communication services from EDS. EDS focuses technology on business goals, creates ways to improve quality and save time, makes it all work together. We can even help you manage it. You can't control change, but you can take advantage of change with EDS. Morning breath. As soon as I have my coffee, it's all gone. Whether you admit it or not, it's a problem. Okay, I have morning breath, but it doesn't bother anyone. Don't be so sure. Mine's not so bad. Morning breath's not as bad as you think. It's worse. So get scope. Its two powerful ingredients kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Ah. Was my morning breath really that bad? There's no denying morning breath, so save your breath with scope. Now there's a special opportunity for you to support the athletes of Special Olympics. Check your publisher's clearinghouse mail for valuable coupons on your favorite Procter & Gamble brands. For each coupon you redeem, Procter & Gamble will contribute 10 cents to Special Olympics. It's a special savings for you and a chance of a lifetime for some special athletes. The markets are closed today, but the Wall Street Journal's Tom Herman says it's time to talk taxes, and he's got some facts that may just surprise you. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Ann. A lot of people don't realize that they may be hit with a bigger tax bill for 1991. That's right. A lot of people have forgotten that a tax law was passed one year ago that's already taken effect, and it's going to be a very unpleasant surprise for taxpayers in the upper income brackets. For instance, anyone earning over $100,000. Now, for the average taxpayer earning about Forty or 50000 there will be little or no change. But a lot of upper-income taxpayers are in for a very unpleasant surprise. There are only, what, six days left in the year. Is there anything that these people can do to protect themselves? Yes, there are a few things. Number one is you can defer income until next year. A lot of people are consultants. Don't send out that bill now. Wait until January. Another strategy is sell some stocks now and take losses that will offset gains that you had earlier in the year. Now it also depends on where you're living in terms of how, how, much you, how much you may be hit. It sure does. We did a survey and accountants told us that, for example, a New Jersey man earning $250,000 will pay 14% more in 1991. Mm. However, a retired couple living in Florida earning in around 60000 will actually have a lower tax rate, only about 2% 2, 2 lower. All right. Tom Herman, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank and you, Ann. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Time now for the weather and Joe Witte. And Joe, are we going to have a white Christmas? Well, if you go to the White Mountains of Arizona and New Mexico, you can. And that's way down in the southwest for sure. Take a look at the satellite photograph. You see that moisture in the form of clouds sweeping over the southwest, bringing some snow above the 6,000-foot level. The rest of the country in great shape if you're doing some traveling to grandmother's house today. National weather map shows plenty of sunny skies, a few clouds in the Pacific Northwest, and we'll have some scattered clouds over the northeast. Temperature-wise, everybody running close to seasonable to even above seasonable. In fact, the northern plains in those 30s represents about 20 degrees above normal for this time of the year. That's my national Christmas forecast. Now here's what's happening in your neighborhood.
and a little more in just a few more minutes. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Joseph. In sports, it was a quiet night, but a wild year. A look back after this. In the mountains of Colombia, they celebrate the richness of the land. And from this land comes the richness of Colombian coffee. That's why Maxwell House blends its coffees with Colombian beans. Rich beans, rich coffee. Some we slow roast for old-fashioned richness. Some we roast dark for the flavor of France. We buy more Colombian beans than anyone in America. Maxwell House, blended with Colombian beans. Because better beans make better coffee. First Contact wrote the book on cold medicine. And now a new chapter, Contact Day and Night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night caplets to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. New Contact Day and Night, a whole new chapter in cold relief. Here, winner time with 2.9 financing. 2.9 on Chevy Cavalier will make a winner out of you. Let's get to the point. Buy any new Chevy Cavalier in stock, all with anti-lock brakes and get 2.9 financing for 48 months. The best incentives in years. Choose from hundreds of cars, hundreds of trucks, and make no payments till spring. So what's the point in waiting? Winner time ends January 5th. To be a winner, see a winner. Your gold star Chevy dealer with winner time 2.9. Bedland's end-of-year clearance sale is going on now with savings up to 70% on selected name-brand furnishings for the entire home. In addition to the finest quality adult and children bedroom sets, Simmons mattresses and box springs, you'll find sofas, daybed, sleeper sofas, love seats, recliners, and accent chairs. Don't miss Bedland's end-of-year clearance sale and save up to 70% and have your new furniture delivered free. Bedland has been doing it this way for 30 years. Long about now, Santa should be completing his rounds, but yesterday he took time out to pay a visit to the nation's capital and go water skiing with a couple of his reindeer in the Potomac River. Santa said it's something he just can't do at the North Pole. In sports, everyone took Christmas Eve off, but it's a perfect time to take a look back at some of the year's memorable moments. Lee Trevino and Craig Stadler evidently found some mistletoe on the golf course. But there was clearly no love lost between former heavyweight champ Larry Holmes and Trevor Burbick when they turned a parking lot into a boxing ring. James Brown, the godfather of soul, performed some mean moves when he practiced with the Atlanta Falcons. But no one will ever accuse Bears coach Mike Ditka of dancing around an issue, especially after a loss. I'm just saying that the plays weren't made that had to be played, that, made, that were there to be made, and we had people my God, as open as they'll ever be in the history of this sport. There will be nobody more open than the people we had open. Final. And how did other sports figures vent their anger? Los Angeles Kings coach Tom Webster tried to harpoon a referee. Andre Dawson of the Cubs went completely batty. And minor league player Doug Strange and umpire Jeff Henricks went at each other. But we leave it to another minor leaguer, Rodney McRae, to ring out the year with a bang. The sports schedule gets a bit busier today in college football. Stanford meets Georgia Tech in the Aloha Bowl. And in the NBA, the Clippers host the Lakers. And Boston visits Chicago. And that's sports. And Christmas came a couple of days early for hunch players betting the horses at New York's Aqueduct Racetrack. A long shot named Presence won Monday's fourth race. The early Christmas present paid $96.60 for each $2 winning ticket. The news continues in just a moment. You're watching NBC News at Sunrise. Later this morning on Today, it's a Christmas celebration with your favorite AM crew, plus the soulful sounds of singer Patti LaBelle and the Harlem Boys Choir, later on Today. Good morning. This is the TV 13 Farm Market Report. 
Good morning. From the Anderson's Grain Office in Maumee, Ohio, this is Becky Jessing with a review of the market news from the Chicago Board of Trade for Tuesday, December 24th. Corn futures were mixed with the nearby's lower on pre-Christmas liquidation and also a disappointing USDA export inspection estimate on Monday. Trading was very thin and choppy before the early close on Tuesday and the Christmas holiday. The USDA on Monday said that only 19.7 million bushels of corn was inspected for export during the week that ended on Thursday. And that was much lower than the trade estimates of 25 to 30 million bushels, but more than the 29 million that were inspected at this time last year. The estimate underscored the bearish near-term corn export situation, which is expected to last throughout the holidays. The market continues to await some direction on future export demand from the breakaway Soviet republics. The strengthening in the U.S. dollar relative to foreign currencies also pressured the futures on Tuesday. A weaker dollar on Monday did raise hopes, however, for additional export demand. The wheat futures turned higher on fund buying, erasing early losses that were linked to profit-taking after Monday's fund-driven surge to new contract highs. A slightly higher than expected USDA export inspections estimate of 26.3 million bushels also was supportive. Also news that exporters would submit offers on Tuesday night to Egypt for 300,000 tons of U.S. wheat That, along with the growing concern of tight U.S. stocks, were contributing factors to higher values on Tuesday. The soybean futures were mostly lower in very quiet trading, setting back from Monday's two-and-a-half-week highs in step with a slight upturn in the U.S. dollar. Volume was very light at the start of the shortened trading session, although active trading on Monday did result in a greater-than-usual trader population for Christmas Eve. Ideas that the changeover to the Commonwealth of Independent States from the Soviet Union will be followed by more U.S. export credits and aid targeted towards specific republics did keep the futures firm on Tuesday. On the cash side, corn was down three-quarters of a cent, closing out at $2.47 per bushel, and new crop for 1992 is $2.43 and three-quarters cent. Soys were down one and three quarters for the day at five dollars and fifty six cents. Red wheat up two at four oh nine and three quarters, and oats unchanged at one twenty one. Seasons greetings from all of us at the Andersons. We'll be back with today's weather after these messages. Week of winter time at your Chevy Geo dealers where you can still get cash back or low financing on Chevy cars, trucks, and Geos. And now you can get big wintertime savings at Northwest Ohio's largest Chevy Geo dealer, Dave White Chevrolet Geo. More than 300 Chevy and Geo cars and trucks are in stock. No one in Northwest Ohio has a bigger selection. Hurry in for wintertime savings. Hey, with wintertime deals like these, anybody can still be a winner. Only at Dave White Chevrolet Geo, Alexis and Monroe in Sil- If you think a muffler is something you just stick under your car, Think again. The wrong one can really hurt your engine performance and fuel economy. And we know. We've been engineering, building, and installing mufflers for 35 years. When you get a muffler here, it's Midas quality. Installed by Midas trained experts and guaranteed for as long as you own your car. All at a great price. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Right now, you're participating. Local Midas dealer received 20% off all exhaust service. And a Merry Christmas. It looks like we are not going to have a white Christmas, but a very mild one for today. Mostly sunny and mild with a high of 40 degrees for tonight. Mostly clear and cold, a low down to 25. And as we look ahead to the day after Christmas, tomorrow mostly sunny and a little bit warmer with a high between 40 and 45 degrees. 
Christmas 1991 finds America in an economic recession, and the downturn is reflected in America's charities. Henry Champ has that story. At Christmas, when times are tough, there is the theory that people give a little more. Evidently, uh, the recession or the hard times is so broad and so deep that people are saying, if it's reaching me, it must really be tough on the guy just below me. And they're reaching a, a lot deeper uh, this year. Deep enough that Virginia's Salvation Army has as much money as last year, but not deep enough to meet a much greater demand. Shelters are overcrowded, often with people in need for the first time. Requests for services are up 40 percent. Donors understand. I think if everybody could give a little something, it would, it would go a long way. There are more homeless this year, but that won't stop the Salvation Army. While doing much better than expected this Christmas, the Salvation Army and other charities are worried about their fundraising over the rest of the year when the mood for giving isn't as pronounced. Henry Champ, NBC News, Fairfax, Virginia. A discouraging number of Americans face joblessness this Christmas. GM announced thousands of layoffs a few days ago, and David Bloom reports that the airline industry has also been hit hard. This will not be the Christmas the Labiosa family expected. When Pan Am Airlines shut down three weeks ago, Roxana Labiosa lost her job, leaving this family of four with no second income and no health insurance. It's very scary because you don't know. You see those homeless people outside and you wonder, maybe they went through the same thing I'm going, you know? Because I remember when my father used to work for a company, it was a lifetime commitment. With the demise of Pan Am and earlier this year, Eastern Airlines, South Florida's unemployment rate now approaches 10%. Carlos Labiosa, a former Eastern mechanic, has found new work. But what he's lost is a sense of security. I suddenly thought I had a maid on Easter, you know, for the rest of my life. And then after that, I, then Pan Am. So it's, it's really hard now, you know. But the Labiosas have more immediate concerns. Last year, son Carlos got a computer for Christmas. Now his parents worry about whether they'll be able to send their kids to college. David Bloom, NBC News, Miami. Mikhail Gorbachev is just a few hours away from giving up his job. Gorbachev's resignation is the last official step in the transfer of power from the Soviet Union to the new Commonwealth of Independent States. He'll tender his resignation in a speech carried on television worldwide. Walter Hudson has died on New York's Long Island at the age of 46. Hudson made news in 1988 when he stepped outside his home for the first time in 18 years. He had weighed 1,200 pounds, but had died it down to half that weight. Down. It's been revealed that two American Airlines jets came within 200 feet of disaster this week. The close call occurred at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. The pilot of a Honolulu-bound DC-10 mistakenly rolled his plane for takeoff directly underneath an MD-80 that had just lifted off on a flight to Houston. Well, coming up, economist Susan Lee on the trade pack for the U.S. and Joe Witte's holiday forecast. Good game, good friends. And now that I use fix it and I can tell the ref what I really think. Fix it and, and forget it. Are you nuts? Before I switched to fix it and, Jones Peanut Crunchies only look delicious. Fix it and, and forget it. Mmm. Fixident is the strongest holding denture adhesive you can get. It even stands up to the hottest liquids. With my old adhesive, I'd never make a presentation and drink hot coffee at the same time. For the strongest hold you can get, Fixident and forget it. The leading gourmet coffee gets its flavor from just one kind of coffee bean. So, this is them. Folgers Gourmet Supreme starts with that same Colombian bean for dark, rich body. But then blends in Guatemalan beans for strength. Costa Rican beans for savoriness, and Mexican beans for mellowness. So, this is them, this is us. Folgers Gourmet Supreme, the four bean coffee. California prunes are perfect for lunch. They taste great, they're easy to carry, and they're always in season. So you never run out of them. Sweet, delicious California prunes. Find out how good they really are. 
My gynecologist said she'd been through it and you couldn't cure a recurrent vaginal yeast infection fast enough. Gynelotrimin. She said nothing cures faster or more effectively. It brings me early treatment and early cure. Gynelotrimin. Early treatment, early cure. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of the IBM PC, you've got to know the ropes. Because it deserves a big production. So you set the stage and offer rebates on a cast of PS2s. Go head over heels with deals on amazing software. Then bring down the house with prices that really take the cake. It's the only way to thank everyone who played a part. For a dealer near you, call 1-800-9424-IBM. Today's business report is brought to you by IBM, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the computer that changed the world, the IBM PC. The U.S. could soon be part of a new trading bloc if it agrees to join forces with Mexico and Canada in a major new trade agreement. We get perspective now from economist Susan Lee of the American Enterprise Institute. Merry Christmas, Susan. Merry Christmas. How important is this trade agreement to the U.S.? Mammothly, mammothly, mammothly important. Right now, Mexico is our third largest export partner. It's about $30 billion a year. Um, this agreement would make a sort of North American trade bloc Canada, Mexico, and the U.S., which would be larger than the trade bloc, which is forming in Europe now. It's good for our exports. It's good for our trade. It's good for our economy all across the board. Now, the agreement also allows U.S. companies, more of them, to locate in Mexico and in Canada. Some Americans would really worry this may cost Americans jobs. There's no question it will cost some jobs. However, it will also create jobs. Already, the trade that's going on between the U.S. and Mexico is responsible for 500,000 jobs. They expect that over the course of five years after this treaty is signed, that's 45,000 additional jobs will be added in the export sector. So sure, there'll be some job loss, but it'll be far outweighed by the job gain. Mm. What else would it do? Well, it would certainly bring together this North American bloc. It would help the Mexican economy enormously. In fact, the promise of the free trade agreement has already helped the Mexican economy. It's grown 4% this year. Its stock market is up 120% on the bet that this treaty is going to go through. Now, President Bush backs this agreement. What are the chances that Congress will, too? That is iffy, and that's a good question. Uh, a few months ago, everybody thought this was going to just, whoa, right through Congress, everything going to be fine. But now we have a recession. People are worried about that small job loss. And there's lots of, and Mexico is getting worried, and Bush is getting worried. But I think a key here is that you can't win the presidential election without Texas. Texas is in favor of the free trade agreement. Bush is from Texas. I think he's got a shot. But he's also got, being hit from both sides. Patrick Buchanan doesn't like it. You're this. absolutely right. He's been hit from the left. Tom Harkins is kind of running a protectionist populist platform. And Pat Buchanan on the right is saying, ha, huh, foreign countries never heard of them. So he's, he's right in the middle now. So we'll see what happens. Yes. Thank you, Susan Lee. Time now for a last look at the holiday weather and Joe Whitty. Thank you very much, Anne. And, of course, Merry Christmas to all. Traveling today, not much in the way of problems weather-wise. East Coast in great shape, plenty of sunshine, a few clouds and flurries in New England, 45 degrees in Washington, D.C., 43 mile, relatively speaking, for Chicago. And out west, we do have a little bit of a travel problem in the White Mountains of southern Arizona and New Mexico, and more rain, not real heavy rain, for parts of Texas. Denver, a little morning fog, and Albuquerque, mixed rain and snow, a possibility there. Have a very merry and safe Christmas travel. Anne? All right, Joseph, you too. That's NBC News at Sunrise this Wednesday morning. I'm Ann Curry. Have a merry Christmas. We'll see you tomorrow.